Good morning, my dear brethren. Welcome to today's devotional. We're starting as of today, reflecting on the precious letter the Apostle John wrote and the first one. In chapter one, the first verses as of five on say the following. This is the message which we have heard from him and declared to you that God is light and that in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Probably at this time, when John writes this letter, all the disciples had already died. He was the last of the disciples of the apostles who remained alive. The letter was addressed to all the Christians. They were already brothers and sisters throughout the world that were known, and they needed a lot of strength in the faith. They had already many persecutions. Many believers had already given their lives for Christ. There was a lot of blood shed from our brothers and sisters in Christ. And at the time our brother John writes this precious letter, he's intending and trying to encourage at this and strengthen and support the brothers and sisters, showing them that our God has not uh, abandoned us, that no matter how many struggles and terrible difficulties that we go through, he's always going to be by our side. Sometimes the price of being a Christian is very high, and sometimes we have to give our own life and spilling the last drop of blood for the cause of the gospel. It is not that this way we're paying for our salvation and buying a plot of land in heaven or in nothing like that. But just as they persecuted and slandered and mistreated the Lord Jesus Christ, on some occasions Christians had also been persecuted. But the reward that all of those men and women will receive in eternity will undoubtedly, undoubtedly be wonderful and great because there is no doubt that the Lord Jesus Christ knows how much how they have suffered for trying to remain firm in the Lord always. Now, when he declares and he teaches to the brethren that God is light, even if it is something that we already know, in those days of so much superstition where so many things were mixed up, it was important and necessary that we know the essence and the nature of our God so that we do not attribute to the Lord things that do not correspond to him, that we will know discern how to discern and differentiate and separate one thing from the other. If something we have to ask the Lord is discernment, a spiritual discernment and a lot of wisdom to be able to differentiate and discern between what comes from the Lord and what does not come from him. That way we will be able to live in confusion. We're gonna be accepting things that are not from God as if they were from God, but rather the opposite. It is also important that we practice the truth, that we not only know it, so as to say that we're not simply Christians with a high level of knowledge in our head, but very few practice. That not only we'll know the truth, but that we'll practice the truth, that we will apply the truth to every one of the areas of our lives, of our business, of our uh, school, of our vocabulary, our thoughts, and are always taught and directed by the Word of God. That way, we will be able to experience that freedom because the freedom comes when the truth takes over our whole being and dominates us and controls us and guides us because Christ is, is, is the truth. On the other hand, the Apostle Paul wants us to be a testimony to the world, to that unjust world that has turned his, its back from him that world that is persecuted and trying to damage us, and to that world we have to give testimony just as Christ did. The same way on our own life we have to be prepared and strengthened in the faith to be able to give a, a faithful testimony of what the Lord has done in our lives. Not giving room to hatred, resentment, bitterness, but rather the opposite. Blessing, proclaiming the virtues of the one who called us from the darkness to his wonderful light. 
always joyful, not as sad as the, but always joyful, unknown but well known. In other words, strengthened in the Lord Jesus Christ, renewing every day our strength and not living from glories of the past, but every day renewing ourselves in the Lord and approaching him with faith and security and confidence and showing the world that we know in whom we have believed. My dear brethren and friends, if your faith is not a firm faith, strengthen yourself in the Lord today through the scriptures, internalizing the great truth of the word and allowing the Lord to channel himself through your life, to change you, to transform you, so that you can be an instrument in, in his hands. Why don't we do pray this morning as we always do and ask him just as he's light that we can be light also. Just as he was an example in his time, in his generation, that we will also be an example. And finally, that the truth will be what characterizes us and that the truth of the word of God be the only thing that we can preach from the pulpits in our congregations. So the people that live in ignorance and confused that they can know and they can find the truth because the truth is our Lord Jesus Christ. And if we truly have him in our lives and in our hearts, we will be able to mark a difference in our generation. Let's pray, my dear brethren, together. Father in heaven, thank you very much for the privilege that you give us one more morning to start a day with you. Thank you because you have at just taking all the darkness from our lives. You have filled the emptiness of our hearts and you have ordered our lives. And now we ask you, Lord, that your church and each one of us can strive to give a good testimony and to the world so that they will see what you have done in us. Guide us, strengthen us, protect us from all danger and all evil, and that this day will be a day of victory, a day of blessing, a day in which you can guide us and strengthen us in our faith. We put everything in your hands, and as always, we ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. My dear brethren, thank you for all the ones who pray for us. We notice it. We feel it. We are thankful for each one of us, for the, each one of you. We continue with this trip touring different states and cities and meeting hundreds of brothers and sisters and giving all the glory and honor to the Lord for all the things that he is doing and just being persuaded and convinced that he who has begun a good work will perfect it in the days of Jesus Christ. I send greetings to all of you. May the Lord bless you, my dear brethren.